morning class. Today, um, we're going to study um, share capital retirement and acquisition of treasury shares. Uh, I hope you will find time to really um, listen carefully and take down notes on this, um, on the lessons presented in this video. Prepare for a good um, place so you can work on the lessons presented here as much as possible after the discussion you uh, you answer all the exercises found in the in the book that I sent you so nandoon yung mga exercises sa libro sagutan niyo na lang para mas ma-apply niyo lahat ng lessons dito thank you when a share capital is fully paid a stock certificate is issued to the shareholder and the stock becomes outstanding. Subsequent to the original issuance, various share capital transactions may take place. These transactions may include a change in total stockholders' equity or in the number of shares outstanding. These are share capital transactions subsequent to the original issuance of share capital certificate. So these are share capital retirement, share capital reacquisition, conversion of preference shares into ordinary shares, share split or stock split and recapitalization. Some preferred shares are retractable, which means that at the option of the shareholder and at a contractually arranged price, a company is required to buy back its shares. Other preferred shares or preference shares are callable or redeemable which means that there are specific buyback provisions at the option of the company. In these transactions, the company deals directly with the shareholder. However, a company can buy back any of its shares, preference or ordinary at any time, if they are offered for sales. Such a sales can be a private transaction or a public transaction. So, Yung preference shares, nakalagay na dun sa certificate of shares of stock, yung kung redeemable siya or callable. So, kung ganong klaseng preference share yan, it can be re retired. So, what are the reasons for share retirement? Una, kasi naka-indicate yun dun sa kontrata, kaya i-retire natin yun dahil naka-indicate sa kontrata, naka-ilang i-retire. Other than that, uh, the corporation may uh, retire some of its shares to increase earnings per share, to provide cash flow to shareholders in lieu of dividends. So, kung hindi naman nagde-declare ng dividends yung corporation, Pwede nang i-buy back yung uh, shares of stock ng mga holders. A to acquire shares when they appear to be undervalued. Buy out one or more particular shareholders and to thwart take, o um, take over bids. And to reduce future dividend payments by reducing the number of shares outstanding. So, these are the reasons for share retirement. In accounting, when shares are purchased and immediately retired, all capital items relating to the specific shares are removed from the account. If cumulative brief preference shares are retired and there are dividends in arrears, such dividends are paid and charged to retained earnings in the normal manner. Accounting for the retirement of shares, we have to reverse the par value and additional paid-in capital associated with the original stock issue. 
any remaining amount is further charged to paid in capital until the balances reaches zero and earning. So, um, una muna, tatanggalin natin yung value nung ano, nung share capital na i-retire. Tapos, kung may associated na additional paid in capital, capital doon, kailangan matanggal din. And then, kung mas malaki yung yung ibabayad para doon sa sa i-retire na shares of stock, pag kinumbine yung par value at saka additional paid in, yung balance kukuha ni na yun sa retained earnings account. So, unahin mo nang i-apply yung mga paid, additional paid in capital tsaka yung uh, uh, issued share, uh, par value ng share capital tsaka pa lang pupunta sa retained earnings. Share capital may be reacquired and formally retired by the issuing corporation. Such retirement calls for the cancellation of the stock certificate, cancellation of the share capital account, and the cancellation of the related additional paid-in capital from the original issuance of the stock. So, kailangan, kaya pag uh, entrada ng uh, issuance of share of stock, nakabukod yung ano eh, additional paid-in capital para pagka niretire at ma-identify pa rin yung additional paid-in capital na related dun sa stock. If the retirement price is greater than the original issuance price, retained earnings is debited for the difference. On the other hand, if the retirement price is less than the original issuance price, paid in capital from the retirement of share capital is credited for the difference. Medyo mahaba yung account title pero kailangan kabisaduhin nyo. Paid in capital from the retirement of share capital. Kasi yun ang ikikredit yung account. Hindi retained earnings. We will not consider the, the difference as gain. The difference between the retirement price and the original price of the share capital should not be recognized as gain or loss. The excess of the original issuance price over the retirement price of the share capital should not be credited to retained earnings because that is not an income. It should be credited to the paid-in capital account. The retirement of share capital will reduce both the number of shares issued and the number of shares outstanding. Okay? Anong, yan ang pagkakaiba ng retirement sa pagbili ng treasury shares. Sa treasury shares, the number of shares outstanding, mababawasan. Pero yung number of shares issued, hindi. Pero pag retirement, the number of shares issued and the number of shares outstanding, nare-reduce. Okay, let's illustrate this retirement of share capital. For example, the shareholders' equity section of the Statement of Financial Position of ABC Company contains the following. Preference share capital, 100 par, 10,000 shares. That is 1 million. Preference share premium, 250,000. Then retained earnings, 800,000. Based on the above data, the original issuance price of each preference share is 125. That is the par value of 100 per share and the share premium of 25 per share. So, 1,250,000 divided by, uh, divide by 10,000 will be 125 per share, diba? So, eh, ang par value lang ay 100. So, yung difference nun na 25 is the share premium. 25, uh, 25 pesos times 10,000, that is 250,000. So, let's take an, 
for example, that 1,000 shares of preference share capital were reacquired and retired. There are two scenarios here. When the retirement price is lesser than the issuance price, and then when the retirement price is greater than the issuance price. So case number one will be retirement price is 110, which is lesser than the issue than the issuance price. And case number two, the retirement price is 130 per share, which is greater than the issuance price. What will be the journal entry to record the retirement of share 1,000 shares at, uh, at 110 price? So we debit the preference share capital. For its value, par value times 1,000. And then, yung associated preference share premium doon. So, sabi natin kanina, 25 pesos per share yung premium, e 1,000 share yon. So, 25,000 pesos will be debited for the preference share premium. And then, how much cash? should be disbursed 110 kasi ang selling price niya ay ang uh, uh, um, redemption price niya or retirement price niya is 110 so yan ang cash na dapat lumabas 110 and that will be 110,000 for the 1,000 shares of stock and then sa natin ngayon ilalagay yung difference ng 125,000 at 110,000 gain ba yan? Parang gain kasi, no? Nabenta natin ng mahal, nabili natin ng mura, parang gain. But we're not going to record that as a gain. Kasi kung i-record natin yan as a gain, ang i-credit natin ay retained, earn retained earnings account. But it should not be so. Kasi hindi natin yan i-consider na gain. Kundi as a paid-in capital from the retirement of preference share. So, that is an addition, uh, that is an um advantage that we have from rec uh, from retiring the preference shares pero hindi ko consider na gain so ang gagamitin nating account ay paid in capital from retirement of preference shares ang haba ng account title but you have to memorize that paid in capital from retirement of preference shares 15000 now let's take a look at a case where the retirement price is over the issuance price and in this case it is 130 pesos per share so pareho pa rin tatanggalin natin yung share capital amount or we debit the preference share capital 1000 times 100 par then aalisin buburahin natin yung uh, related or associated premium on those shares. So, 25 pesos times 1,000. Uh, o, tama. 25 pesos times 1,000 shares. So, that is 25,000. Eh, ang babayad natin ay 130,000. So, lugi tayo ng 500,000. Wala na tayong pagkukuha na na share premium kasi yung related premium dun sa 100,000 ay na-debit na natin. So, i-consider na natin yan na loss on redemption. Kaya naka-debit na na 5,000. So, if you're going to take a look at this, meron tayong loss on redemption, pero wala tayong gain on redemption. Kasi pag loss on redemption, dinedebit natin yung retained earnings eh. Diba? Pero pagka gain on redemption, hindi retained earnings ang kinikredit natin. Anong kinikredit natin? Paid in capital in excess of ay, paid in capital in redemption of the share capital. Kung preference share yan, paid in capital from redemption of preference share capital. Okay? So, the debit to the retained earnings of 5,000 is the difference between 30, 
130 and 125 which is 5 pesos per share. So, lugi ng 5 pesos per share kasi mas mahal nating binili yung shares of stock. Pero tandaan nyo, ang gain hindi nire-record. Pero ang loss nire-record natin. Kasi ang gain hindi natin kinikredit sa retained earnings. Pero ang loss dinedebit natin sa retained earnings account. A company may repurchase shares of its own stock from investors and then cancel or retire those shares. Retired shares cannot be used for any other purposes. Although the number of authorized shares remain the same, the number of shares outstanding and the number of shares issued are reduced by the number of shares retired. So, for instance, ito yung ating issued and outstanding shares. When we, when we decide to retire, when the corporation decides to retire the, the shares, mawawala na talaga yan dito sa listahan ng issued and outstanding kasi retired na yung shares. So, repurchase for the reason of retirement reduces the number of issued shares and outstanding shares. Now, a company may repurchase shares of its stock from investors for a variety of reasons, such as to make shares available to employees for purchase through an employee stock option plan or if the company's management believes that the current market price of the stock is too low and represents a bargain. Shares repurchased by a company and held in its own account are referred to as treasury stock or treasury shares. These shares remain part of the company's issued shares but lowers the number of outstanding share. So, uh, dalawang, dalawang klase ng repurchase, no? Dalawa. Isa to retire and as, isa to reacquire. Kapag ni-retire, walang, wala nang outstanding and issued, nabawasan na. Kapag ni-reacquire, napalitan lang yung pangalan ng no? shares. Hindi na siya <clears throat> Capital shares, kundi treasury shares na parang investment on its own shares na ito. Again, let's uh, go back to our previous lessons na about shares of stock. So, uh, illustrate ko lang in this uh, diagram or visual aid kung ano yung stock na pinag-usapan natin. Uh, itong malaking Philippine stock na ito, ito yung available na stock na pwedeng i-request ng isang corporation to be authorized. Ano yan? Indeterminate ang amount yan. So, kaya nag apply sa Securities and Exchange Commission for application, di ba? Kasi nire-regulate nila tong stock na to at pinoprotektahan nila yung uh, mga investors, mga Filipino, Philippine investors. So, magpapa-approve ang corporation sa Securities and Exchange Commission ng authorized share capital or capital stock na pwede nitong i-issue sa public. So, once nagkaroon na ng promotion ang corporation for the selling of uh, approved authorized share capital, may mga magsusubscribe na dyan na mga investors. Yung mga investors na nagsubscribe will either pay in full or magiging delinquent. Kung paid in full ang subscription ng isang investor, ma-i-issue sa kanyang pangalan yung binili niyang mga shares. Kung magiging delinquent naman siya na na investor, 
yung shares niya may ibibigay sa highest bidder. Tapos kung ano lang ang matira, yun lang ang mapupunta sa kanya. So, uh, mapupunta yung share sa highest bidder. Ngayon, kung walang highest bidder, ang bibili ng share, mapupunta yung shares of stock na yun dun sa corporation. At magiging bahagi ito ng treasury share. So, itong treasury share ay pwedeng manggaling dito sa mga unpaid and delinquent uh, subscription where there are no highest bidders. Pero kung merong highest bidder at saka fully paid yung mga subscription, magiging issued and outstanding share yun in the name of the shareholder and the highest bidder or the highest bidder. Ngayon, itong treasury share na to, hindi na siya issued kasi hindi siya nakapangalan dun sa uh, shareholder or highest bidder. Pero, I'm um, sorry, issued siya pero hindi siya outstanding kasi ang ibig sabihin ng outstanding ay names in the uh, shares in the name, in the hands of the investor. So, pag sinabi nating outstanding, nandun sa kamay ng investor 'yan. Pag sinabi nating issued, ito yung nabayaran na uh, nabayaran na mga shares pero it doesn't mean na nandun sa investor pwede uh, nandun sa uh, corporation or nasa investor kapag ka nasa investor yan issued an outstanding share yan pag ka nasa corporation yan at naging treasury share yan issued but uh, issued but not outstanding sa pagbibigay ng dividends ang kailangan ay issued and outstanding. So, in case of a corporation's treasury shares, issued lang ito, but not outstanding. Therefore, hindi entitled to sa dividend. The total number of shares of stock that a company can issue stated in the articles of incorporation is referred to as the authorized capital stock or authorized capital shares of stock. The company may sell fewer than the number of authorized shares shares of stock issued by the company for sale to investor are called issued shares. The total number of shares held by the investors is referred to as outstanding shares. So, kapag ka na ilabas na yung shares, issued na yan, but not necessarily outstanding because an issued shares in the hands of a corporation is a treasury share, not outstanding, but issued. Okay? Clear na ba yung issued and outstanding? Kasi medyo mahirap kung may kailan issued, kailan outstanding. Issued, kapag nakalabas na dun sa Uh, authorized capital share of stock kapag na-subscribe na issued na yan once it is subscribed issued na yan pero hindi naman lahat ng subscribe ay napupunta sa shareholders or highest bidder so kapag napunta yan sa shareholder and highest bidder ibig sabihin nasa kamay na ng investor ang tawag dyan ay issued and outstanding pero kung hindi yan napunta sa kamay ng shareholder or highest bidder at napunta yan sa pangalan ng issuing corporation, then that is not an outstanding share. That is an issued but not outstanding share. Acquisition of a company's own stock is a... Uh, an equity transaction that results in no gain or loss on the company's books, regardless of the price paid for the stock. The transaction results in a contra-equity item that is reported as a debit against stockholders' equity. Treasury shares do not earn dividends 
and do not provide the company with additional votes at the annual stockholders meeting. Treasury stock can be made available for employee incentive plans or reissued for sale to the public. Whereas retired shares are cancelled and cannot be used for any purpose, retired shares reduce both the number of shares issued and outstanding shares of top stock, typically making each share of outstanding stock proportionately more valuable. So kapag ka, uh, treasury shares issued yan, but not outstanding, therefore it cannot be uh, used in voting. No? Kapag ni-retire naman yung, ano, yung shares, ang epekto nun, tumataas yung value ng outstanding. Kasi tumataas yung, uh, kumukonti yung uh, number na gagamitin to divide the equity, to compute for the book value, and even for the earnings per share. Dumiliit kasi yung number of shares outstanding. Therefore, uh, lumalaki yung value ng no? shares of stock at saka yung earnings per share. The issuing corporation sometimes reacquires issued shares issued to shareholders either by purchase or donation. Such shares are being held in the name of the corporation and as I said they are called treasury shares. The company may reissue these shares at some future date as deemed necessary. So, it is also one of the distinctions between retired and treasury shares, no? Yung retired shares can, can no longer be reissued. Pero yung treasury shares can be reissued at some future date as the company deems it necessary. So, the practice of reacquiring one's own capital share is done for the following reasons. First, to obtain shares to be used in acquiring plant assets. Instead na mag-appropriate ng, ng retained earnings to buy uh, plant assets, pwede bumili ka na ng treasury shares mo. Kasi pag nag, bumili ka ng, <clears throat> nag-reacquire nag ka o bumili ka ng treasury shares, nagsiset aside ka rin doon ng uh, retained earnings. Required yon na mag-set aside ng retained earnings. So, hitting <coughs> two birds with one stone kapag ka <coughs> nag-reacquire ka ng treasury shares. To improve <coughs> earnings per share by reducing the number of shares outstanding. So, at dahil konti na lang yung shares outstanding, yung earnings per share lalaki kasi yung divisor uh, uh, kukonte eh, di ba? Now, another reason is to invest excess earnings temporarily. So, in the meantime, at ayaw pang mag-declare ng dividends ng, ng corporation, pwedeng i-invest mo na yung earnings sa treasury shares. Another reason is to support the market price of the share capital. So, kung masyadong mababa yung price ng ano, yung book value ng ng share capital ng isang corporation, pwedeng bilihin ang ibang shares as, a, as treasury shares para bumaba yung uh, number of shares outstanding at lumaki yung value ng market price ng share capital. So, to increase the ratio of liabilities to shareholders' equity, bakit ba mas magandang, mas mataas yung liabilities kesa sa shareholders' equity? Siguro for tax reason, no? kasi yung liabilities, yung interest na binabayad doon sa liabilities are deductible as expense. Uh, di ba? Yung interest expense is a, is a deductible expense from the income. Hindi katulad nung sa, sa binabayad na dividend sa mga shareholders, hindi yung deductible as expense. Dividends are not deductible expense but are tax mas uh, mas mabigat kasi tinatax yung dividend so 
one of the reasons why uh, pinataasan na lang yung liabilities instead na yung investment or shares of stock. So, to obtain, the last is to obtain shares for conversion to other securities such as preference share capital. So, kung uh, uh, may mga preference share capital na gustong makonvert and we have um, treasury shares, pwede nila yung magamit for the conversion. What are treasury shares then? Section 9, Title 1 of the Republic Act number 11232 or the Revised Corporation Code defines treasury shares in the following manner. Treasury shares are shares of stock which have been issued and are fully paid for but subsequently reacquired by the issuing corporation by purchase redemption, donation, or through some other lawful means. Such shares may again be disposed of for a reasonable price pre fixed by the board of directors. Treasury shares are considered as issued and fully paid. It cannot be considered as outstanding shares since they are subsequently reacquired and held by the corporation. Treasury shares are not entitled to dividends or voting rights until they are reissued. A corporation cannot declare dividends for itself. Section 56 of the Revised Corporation Code states further that Treasury shares shall have no voting right as long as such shares remain in the treasury. In the same manner, treasury shares, since they are considered as unrealized income, are not part of earned or surplus profits. As a consequence, they cannot be distributed as dividends, either in cash or in the form of stocks. However, if there are retained earnings arising from the business of the corporation, treasury shares may be distributed as part of property dividends and not stock dividends since they are considered as part of the corporation. So yung treasury shares walang voting rights. Hindi sila rin pwedeng, uh, they are not part of earned or surplus profits. So, unrealized income yon. Ibig sabihin, liability, no? Hindi siya, hindi siya profit eh, unrealized income eh. Parang unearned income. It's not part of the earned surplus or profits. As a consequence, they cannot be distributed as dividends, either in cash or in a form of stock. However, if there are retained earnings arising from the business of the corporation, treasury shares may be distributed as part of property dividends and not stock dividends since they are considered as part of the corporation. Uh, considered as asset of the corporation yon, So, it can be distributed as property dividends but not as stock dividends. So, uh, medyo ano, no? Uh, clear pa natin ng konti. Yung treasury shares are not considered part of the earned or surplus profit. Therefore, it cannot be distributed as dividends either in cash or in the form of cash, yung value ng treasury shares. Dahil hindi naman siya income. However, if there are retained earnings arising from the business of the corporation, yung nag-operate ang business at nagkaroon ng income at magdi-distribute ng dividends, yun, 
pwedeng ipang-distribute as dividend yung uh, shares of stock kasi part yun ng asset ng corporation. Pero yung, um, yung uh, value mismo ng treasury shares, wala namang unearned, uh, wala namang retained earnings consequence, eh hindi mo yun pwedeng i-distribute as part of dividends. As discussed earlier, treasury shares may be acquired by purchase and the, ac the acquisition will be accounted for using the cost method. So, gagamitin dito ay cost method. The cost method of accounting values treasury shares or treasury stock according to the price the company paid to repurchase the, the shares as opposed to the par value and the market value. No? So, kapag ka bumili ng treasury shares ang corporation, kung magkano yung cash outlay niya sa pag re-acquire niyang shares na yan, yun ang magiging cost ng treasury share. Using this method, the cost of the treasury stock is listed in the stockholder's equity portion of the balance sheet. Okay. Another form of acquiring treasury, treasury shares is through donation. Treasury shares may be acquired through donation by shareholders. This practice is done by shareholders to enable the company to increase its working capital and at the same time to maintain their proportionate ownership interest. Upon receipt of the capital shares of uh, shares donation, a memorandum entry is made stating the number of shares received. Subsequent sale of donated shares is recorded by debiting cash and crediting donated capital or paid in capital from donated shares for the entire proceeds. Ganun pa rin yung kung magkano na pagbentahan i-record. So tandaan yung gagamitin na ano, na account titles. Donated capital or paid in capital from donated shares. O dalawang ano, pwede niyang pagpilian account titles. Donated capital or paid in capital from donated shares. So, kapag ka may nag-donate na shareholders dun sa corporation, memorandum entry lang. And magkakaroon lang ng journal entry kapag ka naibenta na yung donated shares. So, kapag binenta na yung donated shares, ang mangyayari, re-record natin yung cash na tinanggap natin and that amount of cash will also be the value of the donated capital sold. So, debit cash ang ikakredit natin, donated capital. Or, paid in capital from donated shares. Again, donated capital or paid in capital from donated shares. Okay, let, ex let us explain this, or let me explain this lesson through the, this illustration. No? The shareholders' equity of EB Bakes Corporation included the following items. Ordinary share capital, 20 par, 50,000 shares, outstanding, so 1 million. Ordinary share premium, 5 pesos per share, 250 retained earnings as a balance of 50,000. On September 1, 2021, 1,000 shares were reacquired at 24 pesos. On September 30, 700 shares were reissued at 30. Entries to record the foregoing transactions and the shareholders' equity section of the statement of financial position as of September 30 are presented as follows. So, tandaan nyo, ang par is 20, na reacquire at 24, and then binenta at 30. 
Tapos meron 5 pesos per share premium dun sa uh, 50,000 shares. Okay? On the entry to record, the reacquisition of the treasury shares will be 24,000 debit treasury shares and credit cash, 24,000. Kung ano yung cash outlay natin, ganun natin i-record yung treasury shares natin. So, kailangan pag nag-reacquire ka ng shares of stock or bumili ka ng treasury shares, magkakaroon ka ng appropriation ng retained earnings mo for the same amount. So, you have to debit you have to debit the retained earnings by the same amount of treasury shares and credit retained earnings appropriated for treasury shares. Walang nabawas dun sa retained earnings mo. Kinlasify mo lang yung retained earnings mo into uh, uh, unrestricted retained earnings which can be available for dividends and restricted retained earnings which cannot be in the meantime uh, be available for dividends. Yun ang ibig sabihin nito pag nag-reserve nag ka ng iyong retained earnings. Hindi mo muna pwedeng gamitin for dividends. Now, binenta yung treasury shares on September 30. So, 30 pesos yung uh, selling price niya per share. That will be 21,000. Debit cash, 21,000. And credit share, treasury share, 700 shares lang naman. So, 700 times 24,000, that is 16,800. Parang kumita ka, no? Kasi nabenta mo ng 30, yung binili mo ng 24. Pero hindi natin yan i -re recognize as gain. Sa halip, i -re recognize natin yan into another account, which is paid in capital from share of treasury shares. So, pag nakita niyo yung paid in capital from share, sale of treasury shares, parang ano, income from sale of treasury shares yan. Pero hindi natin yan nire recognize as income. Ang ginagamit natin na account ay paid in capital from sale of treasury shares. Then, dahil nabenta na natin yung treasury shares natin, dapat buburahin na rin natin yung appropriation or reservation or restriction na associated dun sa number of shares na yon. So, yung treasury shares natin will be debited for 16,800. That is the cost of the uh, the cost of the treasury shares when we uh, when we acquired it, about 24 times 700, that is 16,800. We debit the treasury shares and we credit the retained earnings. So, ang ibig sabihin, naibalik na natin sa unreserved or unrestricted retained earnings, yung 16,800. 300 uh, shares na lang ang may reservation or may, appropri or may appropriation. Ang kakalabasan ng stock uh, ng shareholders equity will be this one. Itong portion na to yung capital portion, di ba? Contributed capital. Ang ordinary share natin will be 50,000 shares. Issued is 49,700 shares outstanding. Of the issued shares na 50,000, 49,700 ang outstanding kasi yung 300 shares ay in treasury. So, ang makikita nyo, treasury shares are not part of the outstanding shares but part of the issued shares. Hmm. Kasama siya dun sa 50,000 pero hindi siya kasama dun sa 49,700. And then we have the ordinary share premium paid in capital from sale of treasury shares, then we have 1,254,200 as contributed capital. Take note of the composition of the contributed capital. Ordinary share, because nito sa computate, computation na to kasama yung 300 share na treasury. 
So, ordinary share premium kasama din yung uh, kasama lahat ng premiums on outstanding on outstanding shares, okay? And then paid in capital from sale of treasury shares. Tatandaan niyo yung arrangement niya ha. Kasi yan na yung composition ng contributed capital. Sa retained earnings, dalawa lang naman. Appropriated and unappropriated. So, nagkaroon tayo ng appropriation for 300 shares na 7,200. And the unappropriated retained earnings becomes 492,800. Nung wala pa tayong treasury shares, 500,000 yan, di ba? So, the total contributed capital and retained earnings is 1,754,200. Less cost of treasury share. So, ang treasury share, iminaminus natin dun sa total ng contributed capital and retained earnings. So, tandaan nyo na yung presentation na yan. Hindi natin siya nilalagay sa contributed capital. Nakalagay siya. Actually, nakalagay siya sa contributed capital. Pero dahil treasury share siya, ima-minus natin siya. Ito yan eh, 300,000, 300 shares. Nakapasok siya dito sa 1 million. Pero gusto natin siyang mas ma-illustrate ng tama. Kasi hindi mo siya makita dito sa 1 million. So, minamainos natin yun sa, sa 1 million para makita yung treasury shares. Kasi actually, ang treasury shares, equity siya, pero may nature siya na asset eh, di ba? Liability mo or obligation mo na magbayad ng dividend, tapos binay back mo, may nature siya ng pagiging asset. It's not actually a working capital or a working oh yes it's not a working capital you do not use it for for business but you use it for future uh, activities of the business so may pagka contingent asset siya so isinesegregate natin yan at the end kasi iba yung nature niya as shares of stock so we have the total shareholders equity of 1,747,000. Now, in case of donated shares naman, kanina yung diniscuss natin, earlier yung diniscuss natin ay purchase of treasury shares. But there are instances where uh, treasury shares are donated by the uh, stockholders or shareholders. So, in case of donated shares, upon receipt of capital shares, a memorandum entry is made stating the number of shares received. Subsequent sale and donated shares uh, Subsequent sale of donated shares is recorded by debiting cash and crediting donated capital or paid in capital from donated shares. So, dalawang account ang pwedeng gamitin no? sa pag-record ng donated capital. You can use donated capital or paid-in capital from donated shares. Medyo mahaba. Paid-in capital from donated shares. consider as paid-in capital. Now, let's take the same facts in the example for purchase treasury shares where 1,000 was donated. So using the memorandum, uh, using the memorandum to record the donation, record the number of shares received upon the sale of treasury shares. So sa pag pagtanggap, memorandum lang, walang journal entry. Magkakaroon lang ng journal entry kapag ka ibinenta na yung donated capital. So, sa September 1, ang ilalagay lang natin ay 1,000 ordinary shares were received from X as donation. Now, sa September 13, kung saan binenta na yung donated shares, magkakaroon na tayo ng cash. So, we have 
uh, 700 at 30 pesos, we have 30, 21,000 pesos. And credit natin yung donated capital for 21,000 pesos only. Kung magkano na benta, doon natin i-record yung donated capital. Doon pa lang nagkakaroon ng value yung uh, donated capital. Pero pwede rin gamitin ang uh, journal entry. Kunyari, tinanggap yung ano, yung yung donation, 1,000 shares of ordinary shares. Debit natin kaagad sa treasury shares. And then, credit yung donated capital. So, the amount recorded in the, is the fair market value of the shares on the date of donation. Hindi par value, hindi stated value, kundi fair market value of the donated capital. Yun ang magiging basis ng uh, treasury shares. So, let's say ang fair market value ng um, 700 ay uh, 32 pesos. So, 32 times 700. Yun ang magiging value ng treasury shares upon receipt of the donation. Now, upon the sale of the donated shares, then we debit the cash and we credit the treasury shares. So for uh, the amount of cash received from the sale transaction. So at more than or in the similar amount, pareho lang i-record mo nakakredit sa treasury share. Paano pagka less than the amount of uh, recorded cost? So, papasok na uli yung retained earnings. Tandaan nyo lang sa recording ng, ng stocks or shares transaction. Kapag income, somewhat income o may gain dun sa transaction, hindi nire-recognize na gain. Nilalagyan ng account na paid in capital o, or additional paid in from the sale of uh, certain donated capital or donated shares. Pero kapag loss na, pag loss na, dun ka na magre-record sa retained earnings. Nire-record mo na kaagad yung loss dun sa retained earnings. Pero kapag gain, hindi kaagad retained earnings. Kung hindi, paid in capital. Okay? Tandaan nyo yan. Very important yan. Kasi usually, pagka-gain, nasa isip natin, gain yan, no? Pero when it comes to shares transaction, kapag gain, hindi ka kagad papasok sa gain. Ilalagay mo na sa paid in capital account. Kapag loss, tsaka lang siya papasok sa retained earnings. Okay? Again, thank you for watching this video. And I hope... Uh, Matapos natin yung iba pang lesson kasi meron pang ibang topics na dapat um, i-discuss. But for now, uh, tapusin nyo na yung paano noon dito at gawin yung mga exercises na nasa libro. God bless and good luck.